Good morning to everybody and welcome to our to Launa's first commercial webinar. And today our I'm Stefano Corradi, I'm part of the Launa Sales Department. And today we're gonna introduce you our agenda and our uh, webinar rules. And the webinar today will be about uh, multi-channel weight transmitter and it will be shown to you by my colleague uh, Pietro Grottoli. And uh, the rules of the webinar are just that your uh, camera and your uh, microphone will be uh, switched off during the whole webinar. And the only way to interact with us uh, is via chat. You can find it in, on your left. Uh, you can make questions also during the, the presentation of Mr. Rotoli. Uh, and we will answer them uh, at the end of the of the presentation because at the end of the presentation after about 30 minutes uh, we will have a question time of about 20 30 minutes also uh, just uh, want to remind you that at the end of the webinar um, you will receive an email uh, with a, a, sur a survey that we kindly ask you to fulfill it and uh, send it uh, back to us because uh, it will help us to improve our webinar and to, to see if it's something to be uh, improved. Uh, also, the webinar will be registered, so it will be available for all of you and also for the people that uh, can be here today uh, on our uh, website. Uh, there are the, uh, the specific webinar page where you can find our webinar so you can see it also after it and also with a question and the answer. Um, I also uh, want to remind you that next week, uh, next Wednesday, uh, the 28th, we will have our first uh, technical webinar also about multi-channel transmitters, so how to set it, how to program it and uh, make all the uh, features of the so, uh, I was telling you uh, that today we are talking about our multi-channel transmitters. We will explain you the differences between the families of these products. We will explain you which are the common features for all of them. Then we will take a look at a comparison chart that will show in a table the differences between the models and that should be useful for you to select the product depending on the application. In the end, as Stefan already told you, we'll have the question time, so you'll be free to ask your questions, and I will do my best to answer you. So, let's move on. What we can say in the beginning is that uh, we chosen to realize multi-channel weight transmitters with the basic idea of making simpler, smarter, and faster the installation and the management of a wagging system composed of more than one load cell in order to transform the wagging system from analog to digital. Our multi-channel wave transmitters can be divided in three main families. We have the CLM8, that is the one on the left, the TLB4, which is in the center of the presentation, and the TLM8, which is on the right of the presentation. As I told you, all of them have common features and differences. The first common features they, the feature they have is that all of them are fit with a small display and with a keyboard for the calibration. So, even if the products look different, the calibration method is always the same, and uh, when you learn how to set one of them, you learn how to set all of them. Okay, now we can start checking at these general features. The first of all, the individual input channels, digital input channels, are designed for single wagging systems composed of more than one load cell. And can grant us the following advanced features. The first one that we show you is the digital equalization. What means digital equalization? It means that there, there is no more need of using trimmers or potentiometers, as you want to call them, 
to regulate the weight on the corners of the scale. We can check at the example on the left side of the presentation. So with the TLM8 or with any of our multi-channel weight transmitters, it's enough placing a test weight on the four corners of your platform or on the four load cells of your weighing system. I say four to say an example, but it could be three or five or six or, or whatever. After doing this operation, so after placing the weight on, of, on every single load cell, the transmitter will automatically correct the weight value in order that you'll be able to visualize the same weight positioning the test weight in any point of your platform. Such feature is uh, very useful for, uh, for example, for floor scales, for wake bridges, because you save a lot of time, for uh, conveyors, and in general, for any waking system where you are waking something that is not a liquid or a fluid, because a liquid or a fluid goes immediately in the center of the tank or of the hopper, while if we are waking pieces or packages or what else, uh, it's nice to have the same weight, positioning the weight in any position. So I remind you that the greatest advantage compared with an analog system is that you will save a lot of time eliminating the equalization system with trimmers or potentiometers. Now we can check at the other features and we can start from the diagnostic. The first level of diagnostic is the continuous monitoring of the good functioning of every load cell and the immediate detection of the broken one in case of fault. So uh, you'll not have to go to the site, disconnect the load cells, check it one by one to understand which one is broken, but the system will immediately give you an alarm and indicate you which input channel has a problem. If we take a look at our slide on the left side, we can see, for example, that we have a waking system with seven load cells connected. Six of them are working. One is giving an error on the channel number seven, and one, uh, and one channel is disconnected. So it means that you can, as I told you, immediately detect which load cell is broken. Always looking at this part of the, uh, of the slide, we can see that we can visualize for every single channel the load distribution in percentage on every active channel. We can also visualize on the, left, uh, on the right side the signal response in millivolt. This kind of feature is very, very useful when you do the first calibration of your waking system because you can immediately understand if the load is well distributed on all the load cells. Always talking about load distribution, we have a second level of diagnostic. In fact, the transmitter detects if the conditions of your waking systems are changed with the passing of the time. So, in case that something wrong has happened, you will get an alarm and you can go to the site and check. For example, if after six months of working, the load distribution on the load cells changes significantly, maybe you had a 25% in the beginning on every load cell, if we talk about four load cells, and then you find that uh, one load cell is loaded up to the 35-40% and uh, one load cell is just loaded for the 5 or 6%. It means that something is changing in the structure or that there's a problem on the load cell. So you get an alarm, you can go and check. You can take a look at the percentage of the load distribution and try to understand what happened on the system. Another very big advantage of having individual channels is that, for example, if you are using four channels for your waking system 
and uh, one get faulty for any reason, you can disconnect the load cell from that channel and connect it to one of the channels that you are not using. So you can go on working with that system and with that amplifier, and there is no need of replacing the weight transmitter. Always talking about uh, general features. It's important that you know that all of these multi-channel weight transmitters can be connected to all of our indicators series W. Uh, they can be connected via RS485 communication. And which is the advantage? The advantage is that you can manage the complete system and all the advantages the advanced functions of the weight transmitters directly from the weight indicator. So you can manage and visualize diagnostic, load distribution, digital equalization directly from the weight indicator. And there's no need to do it manually on the, um, on the transmitter or on the junction box. Some typical applications for systems like that are certainly uh, the wake bridges, for example. So you have a wake bridge with eight load cells. You connect uh, one of our multi-channel weight transmitters to it. Then you connect uh, one of our BGE indicators for uh, wake bridges, of course. And you can manage everything from the indicator. Other typical application could be, for example, silo weighing or hopper weighing or whatever. In general, keep in mind that all of these multi-channel weight transmitters can be connected to all of our indicators. So you can get a digital system in any case, even if you are using analog load cells. Now we can take a look at the uh, general and common certifications for all of them. In fact, some certifications, as I just said you, are valid for all of these transmitters, while some other are specific for them, and we will check it later. The general ones are certainly, of course, the C certificate. Uh, somebody uh, sometimes asks me, do you have the C certificate? Yes, we have it, and we have it for everything. So uh, we give it as assumed. Then other common certifications are about uh, the NAWI certification. NAWI is the non-automatic, uh, non uh, uh, sorry, is the certification to realize legal for trade weighing systems, uh, non-automatic or manual. So all of them are approved in accordance to OIML R76 or in Europe uh, according to the norm EN 45501 for legal for trade weighing systems. Always concerning uh, such approval, it's important that you keep in mind that all of these transmitters can be equipped with uh, a built-in Alibi memory yeah, for the legal for trade applications. Another common certification is the EAC, and it's a certification that uh, is similar to the CE in Europe, and it is specific for the exporting in Russia. So when you export to Russia, many, uh, very often, customers ask you for the EAC, and so we have it. Not only Russia, but all the countries uh, coming from the cheese market, which include uh, all the, uh, yeah, uh, not only Russia, but um, the old URSS, let's say. Okay, now we can start checking the single families one by one. <coughs> Sorry. And we will start with the CLM8. The CLM8 has eight individual input channels. It's what we call smart junction box, because it's specially designed to work in connection with our indicator series W, as I explained to you before and it grants all the advantages that I described you before. It has on board a small graphic display, as you can see in the pictures, and has on board a standard one RS232 
and one RS485 output. It is also optional for a direct connection to a, net, to a company net or to a PC, um, the Ethernet TCP IP. Such product is available in different versions. So the naked board, then we have a version for DIN rain mounting, and we have two versions uh, in uh, plastic housing or in a stylus steel box, both of them IP67, and both of them especially made for the installation in the site. The most common application for this kind of transmitter are certainly the track scales, but not only. I repeat, uh, when you have more than one load cell, this product could be good. And uh, in any case, when you have a LAUMA syndicator and you want to digitalize the system, you can replace the old analog junction box and install one uh, of our CLM8 to digitalize the system and to obtain the advanced characteristics. As I told you before, this product is OIML approved according to OIML R67. Sorry, 76. Now we can check at the TLM8. As the CLM8, it has eight individual input channels. As standard on board, we have one RS485 output and one analog output, freely setable by the user. So you can set it to 0 to 10 volts or to 20 milliamps, uh, plus minus 5, plus minus 10, and so on. It is freely setable just following the instructions on the manual. More than the CLM8, it also has three logic inputs to do some simple operations from external, like uh, a net, a tear, or a peak value. And it also has on board five relay outputs that are very often used uh, to get an alarm for a minimum level uh, or a maximum weight or stuff like that. As you can see, uh, we also talk about field buses about this product because the most popular field buses can be integrated in our TLM8. If you, took a look, uh, if you take a look at the slide, you can see many names that you probably recognize. Uh, and that's why, um, sorry, the TLM8 can be connected to all of them via field bus. So when we talk about can open Profinet, Ethernet IP, Profibus, CC Link, or whatever, we can manage all of them. It means that the TLM8 can be connected to any kind of PLC produced by the most popular brands like Siemens, Rockwell, Schneider, Omron, or whatever. This is a great advantage because when you have to realize a, an automation and a wagging system in the automation world, the field buses are more and more required. It is necessary to put the, the wagging system, so the load cell, in junction to a PLC or to an HMI, and to do that, you need the field bus. The TLM8 is especially made for that. Just one important thing, I remind you that we can install just one field bus per time. So you cannot get a TLM8 both with uh, Profibus and Profinet together. No, you have to select one at the first stage. As you can see, the product is available in two different versions. So for the rail mounting, that is the most common application, but it is also available a box, uh, a housing IP67 in ABS that enable you to install the transmitter on site, so close to the load cell and far from the PLC and from the control board. This kind of box is available both with uh, an external keypad or without the external keypad. Without the external keypad, you have the advantage that nobody will touch at the transmitter and at the setting while with the external keypad, you have the advantage that you can use it uh, like a common weight indicator, but with all the advanced features that we have described before. 
Like the CLM8, the TLM8 is OIML approved according to R76. And I remind you that this approval is valid both for standalone uh, installation and for installation in junction with our indicators. For this family of products, we also obtained the UL approval, which is a must to export our products to Canada and the US. I repeat once again that the most uh, common uh, use of such product is, in, is uh, in the industrial automation. So load cells, transmitters, PLC or HMI connected together through the field bus. Now we can take a look at the third family, which is the TLB4. As the name says, the TLB4 has just four input channels. It also has standard on board, two inputs, and three relay outputs freely setable. The basic version of the TLB4 has just the RS485 output, while analog output and field buses are optional on request. It is designed to be installed in two different ways. So, on the rail into the control board, or in front panel, using uh, the brackets that we include uh, together with the instrument. The front panel installation is very common when you have to realize a legal for trade wigging system installing this kind of, of transmitter, because it's the only one of our multi-channels that can be installed in that way. Like the TLM8, the TLB4 is a multi-channel wave transmitter especially designed for the wagon automation because it can be interfaced, like the TLM8, with any kind of PLC and can be used in any application involving wagon and force measurement and the connection to the PLC or to the HMI. I repeat the importance of these features. Uh, sorry to, to be a little bit boring about it, but uh, you have to understand uh, that this is a real advantage. Because uh, when you talk with the customer and your customer tell you, I use uh, the CC link, uh, I want to use uh, uh, Omron PLC or what else, you know that using our amplifiers, you can find the right junction between the waging system and the PLC using the field bus requested by the customer. Like uh, the TLM8 and the, TL, uh, and the CLM8, the TLB4 is OIML approved according to R76. It is, uh, like the TLM8, uh, approved UL for the um, uh, North American market, but it also obtained the metrological approval for Australia and New Zealand. It means that if you have to export a waging system that needs to be legal for trade, you can take in consideration that needs to be legal for trade in Australia or New Zealand, you can take in consideration this kind of indicator. Basically, these are the features of the transmitters that, uh, that I described you. So common features and specific ones. At this stage, we can take a look at a simple comparison chart that shows us the differences between the models in order that you can understand which one using depending on the application that you have to realize. So when it's time for you to develop a new application and to choose the most suitable multi-channel wave transmitter, uh, you always have to keep in mind some basic questions that you have to ask yourself uh, to select the product. Let me, let me do an example. How many load cells are composing your wagging system? If you have more than four, probably you have to exclude the TL before that has just four inputs. How do I want to install it? Do I want to install it in the site? Do I want to install it in the front panel? Do I want to install it into the control board? 
if I want to install it in the front panel, the TLB4 is the right choice. If I need to put it in the site, the right choice is the TLM8 or the CLM8. Then, which kind of signal output do I need for my application? If I just need an RS485, I can take in consideration the CLM8. But if I need a field bus, as in the most common cases, I will need uh, to select a product between the TLB4 and the TLM8. Other question that you could ask yourself is, which kind of certification do I need? So, I have to realize a system legal for trade in Australia. I will choose the TLB4. I need to realize, uh, to export something to the United States. I will choose between TLB4 and TLM8 because they are UL approved. So, I could say that basically this is all. So, I try to explain you the, yeah, I repeat once again the common features and the main differences between these products. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. This presentation is finished. And now I will give back the stage to Stefano, that will be the, the moderator of the question time. So if you have uh, questions, he will manage it, and I will try to answer you. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Pietro. And just we wait a few, few seconds that some, if some of you have some question or that's about our multi-channel wave transmitter. Um, just uh, I saw that Mr. Kyung asking how to save the video. No, you don't have to save nothing because we will uh, register it and um, upload it to our website so you can find the video uh, within, within ten, 10 days. So next week, maybe probably you will find it on our website. Okay, we have the first uh, question, Pietro. Um, Mr. Bishop is asking if is it possible to use our multi-channel wave transmitter for more than one scale? Well, technically it is possible, but you have to forget all the features that I described you till now. Let me explain you. If you want to use the single input channels for the connection to the PLC, you can do that but you will lose the weight visualization on the display, the utilization of logic inputs and relay outputs. You will lose the diagnostic, the load distribution, and so on. The transmitter and its advanced features will be just a converter between the load cells and the PLC. It means that you, uh, that you have to realize a hard work on the PLC side to filter the values, to acquire the divisions, and to do all the settings. So uh, it could maybe be uh, an advantage if you realize, for example, multi-head scales, because uh, you save a lot of money in terms of transmitters. It means that uh, if you have a multi-head system with eight load cells, you don't need eight amplifiers, you could use just one. But remember, that it will just be a converter. So forget all the advanced features. I think it could be helpful for applications like that if you have to realize many, many wagging systems all made in the same way. Otherwise, I think it is not so convenient and it is better using uh, the advanced features of the amplifier. Okay, good. Uh, thank you, Pietro. Uh, I don't know if there are some other question or clarification about our weight transmitter. Um, for example, um, some some of our customers often ask Pietro if our uh, multi-channel transmitter can be connected uh, also to other indicator of other producer or Lama's competitor, for example. Yeah, yeah. This is another common question that we receive not every day, but quite often, because uh, people see the advantages of our multi-channel transmitters and say, wow, I could update uh, old wagging systems, including 
uh, this kind of um, multi-channel junction boxes and connecting it to the existing indicators made by others. But the answer is no, it doesn't work because uh, there is a specific protocol that enables you just to connect the product to Laumas indicators or to PLCs, PCs, and not uh, to in, uh, indicators made by others. Okay. Thank you again. And yes, so, so mainly you can use it with our indicator or directly to the PLC, to connect it to the PLC. Yeah. Um, we have another question. If there are some attic version of our multi channel transmitter? Well, uh, not at the moment. We are working on it. In a few months, it will be ready. Uh, and housing, especially made for the TLM8, suitable to be installed in zone 2 and 22 when we talk about ATEX or IECX. But uh, yes, we are working on it and uh, it will take a few weeks, uh, a few months more to, to see the light and to obtain the certification from the um, notified body. Okay, very good. Uh, and uh, I don't remember if you explain uh, really, really good the, about the homologation OML approval of our junction box that could be also together with the indicator or standalone. Maybe you can tell them again. Yeah, okay. Okay, I will try to explain it a little bit better. So, all of these products are approved for standalone installation. So you can use a TLB4, a CLM8, a TLM8, even for standalone installation to realize a legal for trade waging system. But we have a second certificate that connects in junction our multi-channel way transmitters with our indicator series W. It means that you can get the legal for trade approval even for this combination of products. And uh, I think it is uh, very useful, especially in some specific applications, like, for example, in the truck scales, because, uh, yeah, such transmitters grant you several, several advantages if compared with a common uh, analog junction board. Yeah. Very good, because uh, you can save time <coughs> when, when installing, you can save time when you have to get problem in a loader, so time is money <laughs> everywhere. So yeah, they have, these advantages are very, very uh, useful. I don't know if there are some other questions or from our customer. We still have uh, 10 minutes, about 10 minutes for answering your question. If there are questions, or um, I'm just in waiting some questions. Uh, I remember you that to, to register yourself or to, you, to tell to your colleagues to register themselves for the next uh, webinar that will be next week on Wednesday, 28. Uh, it will be a technical webinar about our uh, multi-channel transmitters, so understanding how to setting them, how to make the equalization, calibration, and stuff like that. Uh, it, will be, it will be held by our uh, technical colleagues, Mr. Vesuvi. Uh, okay, Mr. Popa is asking, which is the minimum uh, the signal division acceptable for the instrument? Uh, maybe uh, the main, the, 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 it means the division of the electronics. Yeah, or I don't know if he's talking about the metrological uh, signal, because, uh, uh, sorry, I go back to our comparison chart. Maybe if we are lucky, no, we didn't mention it on uh, this comparison chart, but uh, the approved one is 0 0.1 microvolts, if I well remember, or something like that. So uh, it's a very, very low value, and it means the, the high quality of the input signal, but uh, sorry, of the converters that we install on such uh, transmitters. But for questions like that, it is certainly better attending uh, the webinar of the next week to discuss it directly with our engineers, because you know I'm I'm just a sales guy. I know the basic technical information to support you when you have to select a product, when you have to realize a new application. 
and uh, but I'm not so deep in the technical matters. Okay, thank you, Pietro, again. Um, um, okay, again, Pietro. Sorry, Stefano, um, but just came up in my mind that I forget to tell you one important things, uh, thing about uh, the managing of the field buses on Ethernet. Because um, we have now improved all the range of these transmitters, so all the most popular field buses ha uh, handled on Ethernet have two doors instead of one, like in the past. And so you have two Ethernet doors, uh, both for uh, Profinet, Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, for uh, EtherCAT. And this is a really great advantage when you realize systems with more than one device, because uh, you don't need an external switch, and you save uh, yeah, a lot of money in terms of connection. So sorry, but uh, this thing came up in my mind, and I just wanted to tell you about it because I think it's important. Thank you, Stefano. Yes, of course, it's important because you know uh, when you can save money, uh, it's always important. Uh, okay, uh, if it's okay for everybody of you, uh, we sorry sorry for for the technical problems again. But you know, sometimes happens. Uh, anyway, we will uh, upload our webinar uh, on our website, so no problem to go to go there, download it, see it when you want, when you need it, and uh, just remember that you will get the the, the survey in uh, in a few hours from your uh, on your uh, mail, and we can ask you to fulfill it and send it back to us because it will be very important. So if it, this is all, thank you very much for attending our uh, webinar and uh, see you next time.